colleague, um, Kailard Hamusindi, um, who is the outreach coordinator for the Zambian Farmers Union, to give you a little more background on how conservation agriculture is moving forward as a major success story in Zambia. Kailard? Thank you very much, uh, Dennis. Uh, my name is uh, Hamsimi Kweled. Uh, I come from Zambia. Uh, my first time to be here uh, in the U.S. and uh, uh, it's a pleasure uh, talking to you this evening. Uh, I would want to tell you a short story about what is happening in Zambia to, uh, with regards to conservation farming. Uh, this is about uh, the, the program we've been pushing as a, a farmer organization with our technical unit, conservation farming unit, for about 20 years now. Uh, so as you can see, like any other agricultural intervention, it's not more like an instant coffee thing. <laughs> yeah, it takes a bit of time, and you need people with passion, uh, diehards, Otherwise, by the wayside, some people would lose faith. So I've already said that uh, we started with very small numbers of small-scale farmers, uh, but now we are upscaling and also moving from what we started as conservation farming towards conservation agriculture, uh, consolidating the gains in uh, productivity and also becoming more conscious about the environment as the climate change uh, concerns are becoming more and more vivid. So our target now is by 2015 to have around about 350,000 uh, smallholder uh, farming farms uh, practicing conservation agriculture. Uh, we, as you're going to see, we're going, we have already a good number of those practicing conservation farming now. And the good news is uh, finally, this was all a private uh, sector-led initiative until about last year when we saw government, uh, the public extension wing, uh, coming on board and uh, they have received uh, funding and uh, uh, taken the expertise from FAO and they've started a program which is trying to bring on board an additional 250,000 small holding farms, uh, meaning we're going to have around about half a million to about 600,000 small holders practicing conservation agriculture by 2015. A, before I go into conservation agriculture, I think uh, the most important thing is to give you a brief about Zambia. Uh, we've got about 75.3 million hectares of land out of which 9 million hectares of er is arable land with good to moderate potential for cropping. About 20 million of that is also good for livestock. Uh, only 1.5 million hectares of the 9 million is uh, actually cropped at the moment. And we have around about 1.2 million small order farming, uh, families of the rural population and uh, with uh, 15 to 18 persons per square kilometer uh, density in rural areas. So this tells us that um, most of our small scale holders, uh, they, they cultivate about a hectare, uh, a hectare to two, and then uh, we only have about 100, uh, 600 commercial farmers. Those are the ones who command over a thousand hectares of cropping and uh, maybe three to 4,000 hectares under grazing. And uh, we have about 100,000 uh, emerging farmers, the in-between, uh, those they command between 20 to about 40 hectares of cropping per any given time. 
but the 1.2 million uh, farming uh, households are mostly dry land uh, uh, production. They depend on rain. So between 25 and 40 percent of the maize planted, maize being the dominant crop for our small holders, uh, is unfortunately abandoned by these small holder farmers. So over the eight years from uh, 20, uh, uh, 2000 and, uh, to 2008, we saw about 1.7 million hectares of maize, which was initially planted, being abandoned. And the average yields, like Dennis said, uh, you wouldn't believe it, uh, but they range about 1 to 1.5 tons per hectare. This is the national average on the rain-fed maize. You're talking of a family of, of an average uh, household size of 6 to 8, uh, producing about a ton of maize, uh, 365 days, with maybe a little bit of small livestock. So you can imagine why the, the world records that number, huge number of uh, uh, covert uh, stricken families. And then uh, during the same period, 73% of our smallholders didn't sell any maize at all. It means they were not producing enough to eat. And 67% of our smallholders didn't use fertilizer. Fertilizer being a landlocked country in Zambia is uh, at a very high cost. and this. Uh, uh, brings in the issue of most of them not affording and 80% of the surplus production actually came from a few productive small orders which is just about 10%. So we have a situation where we have poor productivity among small scale farmers and this is what we are trying to change as we promote conservation farming and conservation agriculture. The, as a country We've got three major ecological zones. Uh, the upper one is our high rainfall area. Uh, we receive around 1,000 to 1,200 millimeters uh, with good forest. And then the, the middle one, uh, the green and the, the, the pale, the lime green, that's our region two. That is what gives us about eight to 850 millimeters of rain. And uh, the lower one is normally in the drought-stricken area. So our conservation farming promotion is from the region 2A going down to region 1, because this is again where we have challenges of adverse weather conditions. And with the climate change effects uh, manifesting, this is where we feel the heat. And that is where we've concentrated on uh, promoting our conservation farming. Other challenges which our small water farmers uh, uh, face are uh, the livestock diseases, uh, where we now have very few households affording uh, um, animal draft power, and also we have the damaging effects of um, conventional tillage, which has become more like uh, a norm. And uh, uh, those are some of the uh, uh, conventional methods which you find, we still have a slash and burn, and uh, that is all very destructive to our souls. And the other side, that's the traditional way of plowing, and that doesn't afford our farmers a uh, time to plant early. And those are the effects, for instance, when we have uh, heavy downpours. We have gullies here, uh, a lot of erosion, tons and tons of soils being removed uh, away by erosion, surface erosion, and because of uh, continuous plowing, we have created hard pans such that uh, we, within a one heavy downpour, again, we have problems of water logging. So those are some of the uh, actually drivers of poor productivity among our farmers. We have also poor crop establishment, for instance, uh, as a result of our traditional way of farming and also very late uh, uh, plowing because some people have to wait for either higher uh, draft power. Now that just works to lock up nitrogen, missing out on the nitrogen flash, and the crops don't really perform. So now we are starting feeling the effects of the uh, uh, climate change. Uh, the other year we had uh, prolonged uh, uh, dry spells and uh, in traditionally cultivated crop, where crop establishment was already poor, we have a hard one, uh, runoffs, 
and the crop couldn't go anyway. And the other side, uh, the crop also is drying and uh, just within uh, 10 to, to 15 days of a dry spell. So those are things which are forcing us to promote conservation farming and conservation agriculture. Now, what we mean by conservation farming, this is where we promote dry land, uh, uh, land preparation with minimum tillage. You could data use a oil, oxen or tractor. For oxen and tractor, we use uh, rip lines and make them permanent uh, plant, uh, uh, planting stations. And uh, we have minimal disturbance of the soils. And then we promote uh, residue retention and uh, we are planting and applying fertilizer in those fixed plant stations. And we have brought in a good uh, crop rotation regime, which is also helping to uh, maximize soil fertility. And uh, now as uh, more of a scaling up, this is where we've started the promotion of uh, planting the acacias uh, so that we move to the next level. Those are some of the things we're doing. Sorry. Okay. For handball farmers, uh, we do uh, planting basins on the other side, and this is how the crop comes out uh, uh, during the rain season. So we have food legumes and studio kind of combination, and that already is you're going to see with our results how we are performing. Uh, for Farmers with the oxen, uh, that is what we're trying to do. They have rip lines uh, in between uh, the, uh, the acacias, and then we plant uh, the same combination of cowpea, soyas, groundnuts, and maize. And this is what you see that uh, phenology Dennis mentioned. When the crop is really growing during the rain season, the acacias actually have no leaves at all. And uh, the other side, that is a 10-year-old uh, crop of acacias planted. Uh, and in, in that field, uh, we have actually about uh, 96. Uh, we only lost, because we were able to fence it up, we only lost about four of them. Uh, in about five years, this farmer will be actually uh, trying to ratoon some of uh, the crops so that we don't have it all meshed up. We've been also doing some uh, trials which we've been following for years now just to make sure we see the effect of the, the acacias on our yields. And uh, mostly those are the results. Uh, we've seen beautiful results. I'll, I'll, I'll go on to show you where we have managed to uh, increase for handball farmers. By year three, we've moved them from an average of two, hectare, two tons per hectare to 5.6 tons per hectare. And then the, 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 the farmers with oxen, ADB farmers, they've moved to about seven tons per hectare of maize and about two and a half tons per hectare of soybean. Now the area also has increased for the farmers with oxen. They are now able within the optimum planting period to quickly plant about five hectares of maize and about two to three hectares of soya. Uh, and all they remain around about averaging two hectares and they're able to get those yields. Over years, uh, I think from uh, the moment you have someone uh, practicing conservation farming, about three years, we have seen a 25 to 100% increase some in year one, depending on the initial starting point of soil fertility, uh, uh, <clears throat> in terms of maize yield. Uh, but the, really, the major reasons for these productivity increases is the, the land preparation. Like I said, the lower side of Zambia has uh, short rent for periods, and also even the valley is got drought prone. So the first thing we do is to allow our farmers prepare their land in dry season. That gives them opportunity to plant within the optimum window. And uh, we also have our precise and targeted application of seeds, nutrients, and lime. That's another very critical ingredient we put into our cocktail, limey, because most of our soils are acidic, 
and uh, you will be amazed what Lyme can do to yields.